I make handcrafted soaps using uh, local ingredients and using knowledge from my elders in the community and trying to incorporate my culture, language and traditions into uh, the soap making. I grew up with entrepreneurship around me. My dad was a business owner, uh, my brother was a business owner. In my head I always knew that I would have uh, a side business eventually. Basically, Mayo grew uh, from all the, uh, the mining activity that was up here and uh, became sort of a supply center for, for a lot of the mines and, uh, and, and the area. The mines uh, uh, were shut down for quite a while and, uh, you know, mining activity became quite limited in the area for the last 20 years or more. When the opportunity came up, to buy this small soap making business, I really saw it as a way to reconnect our people to the land. My soaps are made with a lot of products from, from the forest and I rely on people in my community, my family and friends to be out there harvesting. So spruce tips, rose petals, juniper berries, um, Labrador tea, all these other beautiful gifts that the land provides. And then I turn that into soap. It's giving people another opportunity to be out on the land, harvesting, sharing with their family, and talking about ways that those plants used to be used and are continuing to use them. I was wanting to honor other craft people in my community, and beadwork has always been a craft near and dear to my heart, and I beadwork and Mayo, as a community, Northern Toshone women are really known for their, their beadwork. I think, I think the people, most people are quite excited about uh, Victoria Gold uh, starting up. Um, there's a lot of job opportunities. One of my big concerns is staffing being able to find help that we need. And it makes me kind of concerned about once we start to expand and need more help, then to try to uh, be able to get people as well. From what I've been hearing, they're, they're paid quite well up there. I don't know if we can compete with that, with what we're doing, but we have to see what we can do, I guess. And the other challenge in this community is it's a small community and housing is a struggle for anybody. There's nothing available, there's limited hotel space, and so that's a big issue for I think, a lot of people. If I want to employ people and be a bigger part of the community, I want to have a presence downtown and just a better working environment. And so I've been trying to look at properties available in the community. If you drive downtown Mayo, there's a lot of um, empty lots and vacant old buildings. It's actually pretty hard. I think a lot of people are holding on to these properties, speculating that with the mining boom that we're in, that other people will come in. like it to be Mayo's soap business um, and yeah to play a bigger role in the economy of our region and to be a bigger employer so when I have small tasks that need to be done there have always been young women in the community who who want to help and are keen to help to do a few hours here and there really making soap is one small part of it. You know, I think people have this vision that I'm churning soap in my basement every day and you know that's all I do, but really soap making is probably the easiest part of the entire business. Um, it's all the rest of it that is an essential part of having a business that's, that's hard. I love that I'm able to make money off of something that I love. Um, and that I'm able to reinvest that back into my community and to support other artists. It has given me so many opportunities to be a part of 
um, different conversations around economic development, small business, um, women in business. And so those conversations really excite me and about, um, yeah, being a part of Yukon's economy. <laughs>